like like K dramas have a version of this where it's not the red string of fate. It's the uh, oh they met as children and were each other's first loves. The bl- the blue ribbon of destiny. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> totally different. Hey guys, welcome to Saramanga's weekly Sunday podcast it's the second of july uh we skipped last week because we didn't have time we were just like unable to facilitate the recording and broadcasting of our usual scheduled events podcasts i'm rambling say hi to swarachan Hi, Sara Chan was looking incredulously at Sara Kun because he was rambling, which is why yeah. she was so quiet. Yes. But hi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. So it's been two weeks. Yes, it has. How are you, viewers? We're good. We enjoyed the sun while it lasted here in the UK, and now it's gone. It's gone back to its usual mm. drizzle that you can't even see but can feel Mm. anyway yeah and gray skies and having to wear jackets outside again (laughs) yeah it my hair hate this hates this weather (laughs) like it's there's no point in me doing my hair before i leave home because the wind and the rain ruin it anyway Mm. so i don't do it i just tie it up and leave and then when i get to work i just the first thing i do is go into the ladies and fix it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, here's our display. Uh, yeah. Are you actually going to call the girl in the middle Ang Chan? We haven't said anything about that. Yeah, so random idea we had. What's that? Since the A N G of manga creates, you know, the face, maybe we should have a character. Mm-hmm. Mascot character. A mascot character called. Ang Chan, because it's C A N C A N G, so uh, Ang. That's that's how yeah. we named her. Yeah, but the thing about Ang is that that's also the name of Avatar and Avatar. Stuff, yeah. I know, but that's Ang. Yes, I and this is Ang. Ew. <laughs> 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 and also, that's just Ang. This is Ang Chan. <laughs> Ang Chan, exactly. Yeah. I mean, when we get an artist, we might have them do like four comas or something with uh, Ang Chan. Ang Chan. Ang Chan. Ang Chan. <laughs> Ang Chan. <laughs> Ang Chan. Has a character in it, which might be nice. That'd be cute. Yeah. I know, this could be perks. Parks yeah. mm, for like for crowdfunding and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can just be like additional little comics for people to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so dock it this week. It's I a... feel like we should talk a little bit about Frodge, which is are you for reals in me? Flair project Flair. Frodge and now Frodge is Frodge. Frodge is Project. What's it? What's it gonna go? Where's it gonna go from Frodge? I don't think it can go anywhere. I think it's it's the shortest it can be. I don't know. You might do yourself in it. Uh, it's already one syllable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might just go F F P. Just fra. So just, you might just go. Speaking Fleur. of F P. <laughs> Or f- <laughs> or f- <laughs> um, I feel like we should discuss. So the reason we didn't, another reason why we didn't do the podcast last week was because we wanted to focus on making some progress with yeah their projects. So I think it would be prudent to talk about what was the 
progress that we made because we were on a roll for a bit. Yeah. What did we cover? I forgot. We definitely did ha- like hair and yes, hair colours. And hair colours. And yes. the flare scale. And yesterday. The flare scale, yes. And we also straightened out some backstory stuff yeah, for the yeah, main yeah. characters so they made more sense. Mm hmm. Um, and I think we also cleared up motivations and how they like manifested. Yeah. Basically, we redid the clo- not redid, sorry, like. No, we uh, just did a touch up of. Touch up on the all the t- character profiles. Yeah. Do you want to bring up the. Actually, no. So. Here is the blog. Yes. And this little tab here is all the juicy. Juicy flare product details in a nice Excel file. So I'm just gonna click that on my other screen so the viewers can't see. Sorry. It would be way too much spoilers to actually let you see it. Is this on a nice little Excel file, says the nerd? He. So we'll be referring to the file as we talk to talk to you guys about it and you know we can't spoil all of the details so yeah cool thank you i think i might need more coffee later yes yes we do you will definitely need some coffee later yep pretty much definitely Mm. cool all right I didn't know there were so many tabs. You have access to the file. I know. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wait a second. I didn't know. The number of tabs always surprised me. Mm-hmm. Why are you... I don't know. I feel like the viewers should have different things to look at instead of just the one image. And so here, here's like... This is why we do screen recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We never tend to actually make use of the screen recording. Yes. There's your dumb face and there's my dumb face. Yes. I drew these, by the way, if you didn't know. Yes. Viewers? What yeah. do you mean? What do you mean I didn't know? Of course I knew. No, I don't know. <laughs> the viewers knew. I drew these a long time ago. It was actually for like another project, but now oh. they fit well for the our podcast stuff so uh-huh, uh-huh. they as you can see definitely they are pix- pixelated and like kind of low res which means I need to redraw them sometime which is annoying but yeah for now I can just stop so I, so I can intensifies intensifies <laughs> 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 And so I try and turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. <laughs> what, is, what has gotten into you? Is this the lack of sleep? This is the coffee. <laughs> this, is, this is the coffee. Yes. And I, I've... It does a <laughs> Do you want me to do the intensify for my face? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's flat <fantastic. laughs> I am losing my sanity. Okay, yes, back to flat. Ba- back to, to fraud. Back to fraud. Will you please? <laughs> I don't like fraud. Okay, fine. The project top. You. Okay. Weeb. Hmm. All right. <laughs> so some of the stuff we covered. Did we cover build before? Maybe? No, we didn't. Not really. Okay. So all right, let's let's run through the characters. Uh-huh. Remy, so her build is. She is more built than Sudan and Micaiah. Yep. But less than Vidas. Yeah. Vidas is the most built one. Yeah. So, the kind of thinking we had behind the builds of the characters is we thought about kind of their history and their backstory and. Their kind of personality. And their motivations. And, and motivations. And 
kind of related that to how determined and how much training and self-training they put in around the clock or you know, throughout yeah. the week or whatever. So, you know, naturally, Vidas is very focused on, like, he, his backstory is that he was always on the run, needed to be physically fit to run away, hide, build. They were, like, basically nomads who roamed. Mm -hmm. So they would need to build and everyone would need to put in physical labour wherever they moved. So, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. naturally physically a bit bulkier. A bit bulkier, yeah. Uh, Remy is... Her kind of personality just means that she trains really hard and trains over and over and above what is the bare minimum. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Remy uh, kind of goes over and above what's needed. So she's naturally a bit more toned, a bit more kind of, a little bit more muscle on her bones as well. Yeah. Uh, Sulen is very focused on his alchemy. His alchemy rather than physical combat. Therefore, he's slightly less toned than Remy. Mm -hmm. He's a bit skinnier. Perhaps. He does. He does the bare minimum that he needs to do. Yeah, to keep him you know, at least minimum shape for you know flair work. Uh, Mikaya, he's a bit. More mostly than so then, yeah. Because he, you know, no, tries hard. Tries hard. Tries hard, but he's just. But doesn't really, yeah. Yeah, his aim, his his motivations don't lead him to going. Oh, I'm going to train super hard and like yeah. bulk up and stuff. So he just. Yeah. Yeah, he tries hard, but he's got other focuses as well. Mhm. Mm and Corin is more toned than Sudan, but less than Remy. Mhm. Mm uh, as is less confrontational and knows it's not specifically about power. Yeah, because yeah. her backstory, her um, aim in life is to. Did we cover Corin? I'm sure we did. She wants to explore, explore wants to outside the, outside outside the, the village. village. Yeah, so she knows that she's the sole member of the. Um, what's that? What's the, what's this of the Survey Corps of Attack on Titan? <laughs> <laughs> of this village mm. <laughs> the one and only one who wants to go out yeah so she understands that she doesn't specifically need to be bulky because mm -hmm. she's it's not like when you go out exploring in this world you want to get in a fight with every monster you come across yeah so you want to be a bit stealthy mm -hmm. but she also knows that fights Are will inevitable. be inevitable did so, I pronounce that right? no inevitable there you go okay so she uh, applies herself a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of hair color. Did we write this? We down? did. Ooh, we did. So hair color, we have Remy as being a glazed apricot. <laughs> so I feel like we need to get we, up we the, to, the that that picture. The, so you know, yep. Yeah, you can see into the back end of our work. It's all in. The flare product folder. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to keep organized. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, Chan very helpfully found this picture. So, a bit of background on this is that we thought it would be a good idea to have the, um, like the base hair colors for all the characters to be colors we find in nature. So, like, like natural hair colors. Yeah, more, more natural than, you know, the typical anime where you have, yeah. like, Vivid blues and, and greens, greens and, and purples and pinks and yeah. stuff like that. So a bit more on the natural side, and then when the flares color their hair, those yeah. So be... um, we have a hair coloring mechanic or idea, yeah, which we've mentioned before and talked about. Did we? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So when they color their hair, uh, yeah. as part of the the thing of becoming a flare, yeah, uh, those can be more vivid and unrealistic. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Um, did we really talk about hair coloring? Yes, we did. Okay, cool. We did. We talked Little. about we talked about the you know the waste products and how the blood kind of allows them to. Okay. Do that kind of, we talked about it. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, cool. Are you okay? <laughs> it was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So glazed ap apricot is here, which is 
like yeah. on the borderline of going into kind of reddish hair, but it's still very blonde. Yeah, it's like a bit on the brown side. It's like brown bits and mm. yellow bits, and yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a type of blonde. Hmm. Glazed over a cop. It does a vice. Don't yep. play anyway. with a toy till it breaks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. And then. Yeah. Um. For her hair color, mm-hmm. hair coloring. Coloring, yes. I won't reveal all of the details, mm-hmm. but because she has that kind of segmented uh, fringe. fringe look to her. So, as a reminder, this kind of uh, hairstyle. I was thinking each segment, like, would have a different color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes her stand out, but obviously we do need to see that in actual drawn fashion. So we can mm. see if it looks a bit too wacky or mm. weird. So ideas are, you know, free flow. But for now, that's kind of the idea we have for her. Yes. I mean, it goes it goes with her personality that she choose, she choose the style that would stand out the most. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense for her character. Yeah. Sudan has mm. dark chocolate hair color, which, to be honest, looks the same as midnight brown and whatever the one is above it. Yeah. It just has a bit more, a little brown. I feel mm, it's like a little yeah. bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Yeah. 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 Which f- makes sense for him. It's on trope. Yep. These are right. Yep. Micaiah. What, what does that say? Mousy brown or a shade lighter or R65 from hair colour image. R65. That is. R. Where? <laughs> R. That's 38, 40, what? Oh my god, I should have written down the word for it. I'm pretty sure it wasn't 65. It might have been 56. 56? Might have been 56. Yes. Yes. It, yeah, it's yeah, that. It's, it's that, that one. Whoops. <laughs> That's correct. That's 56. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, he's going to have kind of yeah that color hair. Mm-hmm. And Vitus. Oh, didn't we change the idea for Vitus? He doesn't have black hair we anymore. We did. We did. Really recently, like two days ago, like, right? No, was it like yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. Uh, what did we decide upon? It was... It was... Oh, yeah, he's uh, platinum. Platinum blonde. And then he decides to colour his hair, um, like his entire head, the most common hair colour that's found in the village. Yes. We haven't decided on what the most common hair colour is in the I village. believe we kind of said it's like brunette, the brunette yeah, scale. Like, yeah. So something like that honey pecan one? <laughs> or dark auburn? Or auburn? I don't know. Wait, auburn was thingy. Dark auburn was Corin's colour. Hmm. Maybe chestnut. Maybe, Maybe you chestnut. go chestnut. Oh yeah, chestnut. Chestnut's nice. Yeah. Ginger brown's quite nice too though. Hmm. And I think that's a I think a nicer brown, the ginger brown. Chestnut slash ginger brown. Yes. Cool. I swear these hair colours just make you hungry. Mm-hmm. Glazed hazelnut. Mm-hmm. Honey ginger. Yep. Butterscotch blonde. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honey pecan. Pecan mist. Oh, delicious. <laughs> Mm. Walnut mist. Dark cinnamon. Golden walnut. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, jeez. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and Corin dark auburn. As a dark auburn, we haven't decided on all Corin's highlights. Her recolor. Yes. Lance did not really. Oh right, so he just she. Um, yeah, I feel like she she still feels attachment to the village, so mm-hmm. I feel like she would 
have a hair colour which embodies the village ideals. Mm -hmm. So... And I, I feel like she would colour her ends. Mm. But I'm not sure what colour. So a darker colour makes sense. So it would have to be a colour that's darker than her hair. Dark old one. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Still one thing to decide upon. Mm -hmm. uh, hair length we kind of did. Her style we definitely did. Mm -hmm. Our backstories... We didn't really change anything. No, we it was just kind of solidified some of Surin's stuff. Yeah. And you forgot about some of Micaiah's stuff, so we had to <laughs> we had to had to yes. touch up on that one. Yes. Uh, but yeah, they're they're still pretty much the same. Essentially. Yeah. Uh, that's that's fine. That's all fine. None either. Yeah, all of these are. Pretty much fine, aren't they? Yeah, they stayed. They all pretty much stayed the same. Yeah. Um, What's all of this red? Key emotion and gestures. Oh yeah, we did some work on that, didn't we? Like some key yes. postures. Yes, I I have them. Yeah, poses. So these might be interesting to discuss. Let me first make them all clockwise. Ugh. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> what? Just make your note. Oh, I so whilst that's rotating and opening, mm -hmm. I think they're done. We went to watch. Oh, the thing. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, let's yeah. stay stay on. Stay on topic. Right. We'll move on later. Mhm. Mm uh, so wait, who's who's poses that again? Yeah, so I, at least I kind of had a quick think about what kind of poses characters would have. Mm. Some basic poses that they'd repeat. Yeah. So we got. Also, you know, I have a model figurine thing for posing mm -hmm. from my drawing days. Also, d is this a? F the can't see this, but the male model that Sarakun has is currently in a pose that footballers make when they when they've scored a goal. Yeah. Goal. Oh. <laughs> 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 These are really decent models. Like, uh, I got them from... Well, I got a friend to get them for me from China because they were cheaper. They're about, like, 10, 12 pounds and they're a lot better at posing because you can see, like, the muscle structures a bit. They're not really variable, but it gives a better idea than just the normal uh, posing mannequin, which is mm, just, like, just blobby. Wood. Just a wood blob. Yeah. It's a bit of shit. So, yeah, this is much better. You can also change the hand so you can pull them off. And then attach different grips, and it also comes with like a sword and stuff for posing with objects, which is pretty cool. Yep. There's the open hand, there's the waving hand, there's holding something hand. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, what are. <laughs> I am not going to talk about that. <laughs> Sorokin, you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I just made him scratch his crotch. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah. So we kind of had to think about um, what kind of... How do the characters kind of stand? How do they kind of pose, react? How their personalities kind of play in... Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, how I think about it, I feel like Corin. This is a Corin pose for me, mm. in my mind. See, I can't imagine it very well because that's a male figurine, and you're saying Corin, so I'm kind of like, what? Yes, I know. 
But still. My mental imagery skills are not yeah. the anyway, best. So yeah. Because um, she would have de- have definite like frustration with the village. Because the kind of village thoughts about explore- exploration is quite... They feel protecting the village is the most important prior- priority. <laughs> so when she's so strongly feels like she wishes to explore outside um villagers tend to kind of not react to that so well so i feel like she would get into arguments with them and she would definitely come off as very frustrated because her wanting to explore is comes out of a good place intention wise Mm -hmm. so yeah uh, she would just feel like they, that the villagers don't really get her. And Sarachan is having fun with uh, the hands. But I'm just trying to arrange them because <laughs> all the different hands are, ac- are across from the... Uh, like, you know, not the opposite hand, but an entirely different thing or the same hand. So I'm fixing it. Yes. Sorry, OCD kicking in, okay? Yes, definitely. Uh, but I am paying attention and I am contributing, so it's all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel like she would have you know, frustrated pose and kind of, you know, frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, that would be like her angry gesturing. Do you not understand mm-hmm. that kind of pose? Yeah. And um, when making these poses, I tried to add in a little bit of more than just the emotional side, but adding a little bit of the personality nuance to them. So for Corin, I like I've angled the knees inwards a little bit, and she's standing slightly off kilter, meaning while she is like almost on a defensive slash offensive, she she feels like slightly taken aback a little bit uh-huh. in the situation. She's not like fully standing straight up in a like position of strength uh-huh. what are you doing? don't put this hand off I'm not what are you doing? nothing, just looking at which, which hand is on at the moment okay it's... stop <laughs> yeah, I do this... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one that's missing you want to put it on I'll put it on oh my god <laughs> what? Right, so, yeah, I feel this would be also a Corrin pose. That's, what did, what did you say that one was again? Uh, just like frustrated, doesn't want to listen to others when they call her like a traitor and stuff. She just so, turns away a bit. So her main three poses are all frustrated? I feel like, her, like a huge part of her is like frustration with the village. Mm. What do you think her kind of key emotions are? Well, and well, frustration is going to be a common one, but I feel like she should have other one, other emotions kind of be common for her as well. Okay. Although I Such suppose, as? Although I suppose what anger, was anger her, like, would be cool. one of them. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so frustration, anger, what else? I'd say determination would be one, but okay. that's mostly really visible when she's training. Yeah. Nowhere else. Ooh, like wouldn't wouldn't wonderment be one of them when she's you know just kind of talking about the possibilities mm. of when they when they go out to explore, or wonderment at because uh, because of Vidas because he's from the outside. So when she's talking to him about the outside Hmm. that sort of eagerness to find out more you know wanting information from him there would be that you know that kind of light in her eyes Mm. tell me more and so on you're having fun too with the mannequin I'm trying to pose it into the determination oh okay unlike someone hey Hmm. 
I'm organizing your table. Yeah. It's a mess. So how kind of how would she stand? Mm. Sorry, viewers, for not having like a camera for this, but <laughs> we don't have a camera. I feel like that's probably a little bit too girly to have like knees inwards that much. Yeah. So probably a bit more straight. <clears throat> would she stand up straight, like knees locked? Mm, but then having her torso be tilted like that look makes it look like she's just posing. Okay, so like straight torso. Straight torso? Yeah. Okay, how would her arms be? Mm. You know like the kendo grip that, that you see when they're holding on to the kendo sword mm. and they're like practicing? The, that determination? Mm, what? Yeah. There's a determination in that sense would come out in her facial expression. Mm. So yeah. I'm talking about in a uh, mannequin pose when she's being taught for example mm -hmm. in your example how how would she kind of so maybe she's sitting for this okay okay how would she sit like knees closed which is quite girly mm. or kind of knees apart which is very manly that's yeah. a bit too much of a man spread <laughs> I don't know, I think like her knees would be together, but she wouldn't tilt them sideways. I think she'd have both her knees facing forward, feet flat on the ground. Okay. So it would look more like this than like, you know, yeah. you know the sit that they do where they tuck, a, tuck one heel behind the other. No, no, sure. That's too girly. Okay, sure. And, okay, how would her torso look? She'd sit up straight, I think. Straight? Yep. Sit like up that? straight. Okay. Sit up straight. Maybe lean forward onto her desk. If they have desks. Do they have desks? Probably rudimentary ones. Hmm. But yeah, probably lean forward on her desk. But I'd say that about... Let's say there's no desk and she's listening to someone teach her. Okay. Because with a desk, it's very much a, like... About it's run. an action mm -hmm. rather than a personality look. Okay. Unle unless you really exaggerate just like like a hand on her head and forehead while she works like that. But what is she working on? They don't read or write. Yeah. Yeah. So, you so, know, why, why is she on the desk? Yeah. So I'd say then she'd like probably sit back and but sit up really straight. Okay. Because she's paying attention. Like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. How would her kind of arms and hands be? I think she'd rest them on her lap. Really? Okay. So like that? Yeah, you're gonna like really be focusing. Or like that? Or do you think she'd rest them like each each hand on like each thigh like this? Like this. Like that? That's quite... A, qu a quiet pose for That's her. Quite stiff. It's a very quiet, kind of quiet look. Mm. And it doesn't and really suit do, her character. And how do you show determination while somebody's sitting, listening to something though? Uh, like deep in thought, like intensely thinking. Mm. So would she? Would she like? have one arm across and be resting the other one, the elbow on that and have yeah. her hand resting on her chin. Yeah. yeah. Good too. It yeah. shows like listening intently, mm. thinking how she can apply it like when she explores. I feel mm. like that would suit her. That would probably suit her more. Yep. And maybe like to make her a little bit more feminine, like a little bit of a head tilt. A little bit of a head tilt. Yeah, maybe. Like that? Maybe. I mean... Do you think? Maybe? Yeah, it does suit head tilt? Maybe not the head tilt. No? No. Just like straight? Yeah, because she's looking ahead into, at whoever is speaking. Yeah. And I feel like she'd have a, like some 
extra form of support, not support, sorry, respect for Fiore. Mm. So I think she'd look straight at her and okay. not have the head tilt. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Does it show enough of her personality in this pose, I wonder? Hmm. I don't think there's much personality to come out of this particular situation. Yeah. Scenario. I will take a picture there. Yes. Probably should. Cool. And we can add that to the library of poses. The phone camera is really loud though. It's because I have the shutter sounds turned on. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Next up, still Corin. And kind mm -hmm. of like when the villagers might be starting to get riled up against her, she's kind of like calm down. Mm -hmm. It's. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. It works. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, this was an idea for Corin, but I don't think it works. <clears throat> it's a bit too... Because I don't think she's the type to back down, and that mm. looks like... That looks a bit... Yeah. It yeah. doesn't really look like sh what she'd do. Hmm. Yeah. Let's uh, delete that. Cool. <clears throat> I don't think she would do that either. Uh, what was this about? Nope, don't need that. that yeah, Midas? this this is when she's like, ah, uh, find us. No, it's just when she's like kind of feeling down a bit mm. and kind of doesn't want to meet eye contact with people. Mm. But I don't, I no, she would be, she would stand proud. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah I don't think she'd really. The this is Vidas, I feel. Yes. Yes. So he is the type to kind of stand up straight. He wants to make a good impression on people on the village. Um the thing is he is not fully straight. Kind of standing perfectly straight. Mm. Looking towards the camera or, you know, the mm. frame. And he's slightly off kilter because even though he is presenting himself as like confident and you know, you can trust me. Mm -hmm. Trustworthy. He's this. He feels slightly off, mm -hmm. and uh, to kind of show that in characters, you would typically have them being slightly off kilter, slightly off balance. So that's why I decided. You know, he would stand up straight, but he would also be yeah, at an he, angle. He probably sort of lean forward when talking to people. Yeah. Um. Unless, unless he's talking to Remy. <laughs> mm. So yeah kind of pose I thought for him um, kind of when he talks to people he would or looking down or talking to people mm -hmm. feel like he is inside he's a bit nervous so I feel like he would grip one hand kind of like behind him mm. and maybe dig his like nails into like his palm but the whole bit. digging nail into palm is like isn't really something people do when they're nervous they tend to do that when they're angry and they're trying I... to hold themselves back I do it when I'm nervous really? Is people just use do it to ground themselves hmm. weird I don't know cause that, it sa it looks because like in it... anime I feel like you're getting that trope from anime where people dig their nails into their bombs in a sign of like anger. Yeah. But it's not just in anime. I've seen it in other media as well. Dramas. Dramas and books as well. Yeah, like gripping your fist in anger, but you can also just grip it to like ground yourself. It just depends on what kind of person you are. Okay. People bite their lips not just because of nerves. But you know, you can buy the lips out of anger. Well, yeah. it's just a it's just a tick. It's just a mannerism which people have. People do it for different reasons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, maybe he could, like, grab her thumb instead. Maybe. Yeah. But either way, I feel like he would have a tick. He'd have, where have a nervous he tick, yeah. kind of hides behind his back mm -hmm. when he talks to people. But, of course, from the front, you can't see it because he is trying to, to kind of disguise that nerves, nervousness. That was for Remy. Um, no, it's it's still Vitus. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, this and the 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 torso pumping up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's still Vitus. So we were thinking about kind of the way people greet each other in the village, and it's really hard to come up with just like a normal looking greeting. Yes. Without just copying it from real life in terms of like a wave or. Mm -hmm. You know, or a bow in Asian cultures. So yeah, currently the idea we have for now is like it kind of feel, comes off more as a salute, where they kind of place their hand over their chest. Yes. But yeah. I don't know. It's still, it's still up for discussion. I feel. Hmm. Because whilst it seems to work. It also feels kind of unnatural. Yeah, but like, all salutes look unnatural when you think about it. They and do. And lots of greetings also look unnatural. Like a bow, if you really think about it. It's just like, that's pretty weird. Indeed. But the thing about like salutes is that they're only used in specific context of military or police and yeah. stuff. So I feel like this gesture... To also feels like that that it makes sense for people to greet the flares like that mm. but it doesn't feel like a casual gesture that you would direct at anyone that you're just saying hello to like a wave yeah there's a little too formal yeah uh, I don't know because like a wave is like fine maybe it would just be fine to have a wave I guess Maybe. Yeah. Not entirely sure. Yeah. Because it could just be a gesture that flares do to other flares. Hmm. Yeah, just a wave. Sounds alright. Yeah. Next door. Oh no. Is it the other direction? Yep, left. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's still yeah, so. Vidas. So this is Mikhail? Mikhail. Very notice noticeably he has his notepad. <laughs> Wait, is that that tiny notepad? I don't see that anywhere. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's just a piece of plastic. Yes. So yeah. Uh yeah, he would his kind of neutral pose, I suppose, or one of his defining poses is that he's got his head in his notepad. With his pen. And yep. his pen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That like defines him. Defines him quite well. Yeah, and he is in a quite a like steady, like steady pose. So his legs aren't crossed or anything. He's just like very steady because he feels the most grounded and comfortable when he is writing in, in his books. Uh, this is like very kind of outlandish. <laughs> Very like outgoing because I feel like this is when he would be doing a theatre, not theatre, reenactment mm -hmm. of like a big battle when he's like telling a story mm -hmm. and try like especially trying with to children, dramatize it, dramatize it for like at least for like the kids. Mm -hmm. Just like man, wow, that was amazing! Like mm -hmm. throwing his hands up in the air, kind of make it really vivid in the kids' heads. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, that is very, a very Micaiah pose. <laughs> yeah, and it look, comes off as a bit goofy and just like, he looks a bit silly. Yeah. Yes. It fits him, I feel. Uh, this is him when he is kind of, I guess, interviewing? Or just talking to someone who's come back. Mm -hmm. and he's, Trying and getting the stories from them. Yeah, getting the story down. Um, and he's actually wiping away a tear. So he gets quite emotionally invested invested in um, the stories that are told. 
So obviously this would be a sad part of the story one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, but he is determined in his kind of writing, so that even whilst being told of like the tragic events that might have happened, he is still. Yeah, wipe away a tear, but like keep, keep writing. writing, get all the details down. Yeah, there we go. There Same as well. Wiping yeah. away tears whilst looking away. Yeah. Or listening intently, but still writing furiously. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Uh, his knees, legs being together is more functional, just to keep like the pad. Oh, uh, on level. This is Sudan, I believe. Yeah. So when Sudan has come across a... Uh, he's achieved something in alchemy during his self-study. He's just like standing up and kind of looking at it. Just being like in wonder of it. And just like feeling confident. Like, oh my god, this is really cool. I'm gonna go tell this to the alchemy- alchemist. Alchemy. The alchemists and hopefully get you know promoted. Promoted. And the way his so he's holding it in this hand, and I felt it would suit if he had his other hand kind of. Oh, not like he's afraid it's gonna fall, but that kind of feeling of just like oh, probably it's should. like oh, it's amazing, and his other hand just naturally just is under it just to kind of, in case it falls. Hold it up. You know, as you do when you're holding something important, you just like naturally kind of just um, al- almost cradle it. it. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that suits. Uh, this is when he's a bit more dejected. Mm, I see that Pepsi in the background. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he's kind of feeling dejected, when he's kind of told that his inventions or his discoveries aren't particularly useful or. Oh, what's this? So this is where he's just like frustrated, just like. So he kneels when he's frustrated. Like um, like when he's looking at his experiments on the ground. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So it's more of a functional pose. Mhm. Or because like kneeling on both knees is a little, it comes off as a little bit more mm. pathetic in the way. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit more sympathy. It's a giving. bit more on the begging side yeah, than on the just kneeling down, really. Yeah. If he's like, or I mean, like he could be sitting like on his like feet mm-hmm. by doing that, but it still comes off as a bit more pathetic mm. in a way. Then so, frustrated, really. Yeah. So I had him. Like on one one knee, yeah, like that, and kind of grounding himself a bit, hand on head, kind of just like frustrated, but still, you know, going about his way and picking stuff up, and you know, mm-hmm. next is a next experiment. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this would be him kind of talking to the head of alchemy, okay. head alchemist, of like, yeah. Seems a bit. Yeah, like he's, he's leaning forward a lot. He's leaning forwards, he's keeping his head like down, He because he's nervous, it's really important to him. Mm-hmm. So like, kind of imagine yourself in an interview scenario, whilst you are trying to keep eye contact and stuff. Yeah. Just like, I, at least I feel when I'm really nervous, I kind of tilt my head forwards a little bit, then, kind of don't keep eye contact. Then wouldn't his like legs be together instead of that pose? Because that seems a bit more on the confrontational side than, you know, him just, you know, trying to be respectful and... Have, trying to have eye contact but still also being nervous uh, yeah but standing straight comes off as like a position of power so if he's kind of doing that his arms behind him I don't know and that still works with his oh, legs whoops. together still legs together like that maybe he doesn't maybe he keeps them together rather than having them shoulder width and so that way, it still seems less powerful, even though he's standing a bit straighter. Yeah. Legs together like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because having one foot in front of the other is like you're preparing yourself for a fight. It's not just that. It's also just like almost being pushed back. That was my thinking behind it. Just like he's standing like straight. But, you know, it's just like 
got one leg behind. It was almost physically in a way he's being pushed back right now. Oh. So he has a leg behind him, that anchoring would, him. I feel like that would be an action that would do. I don't think he'd actually stand like that whilst talking. Because action-wise, doing by doing that, it's a bit more kind of a very obvious way of just like, oh, I'm being physically pushed the back. I know, but nobody stands and talks like that, though. Would like it? this? Yeah. Yeah. No. That, yeah, it's, it's a little bit... uncomfortable. Though. Yeah, and it's unnatural. Yeah. Okay, let's go with this one. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. right. Is this one? This one is just him working at uh, the, the stuff uh, on the ground. Okay. Yeah. okay. But so does that mean he's kneeling? Yes. Okay. And this is? So this is how he stands kind of naturally. Like naturally, I believe. Okay. So Where not, he's so just straight, like but not fully straight. straight, but like a little slumped forwards because he doesn't really care about how people perceive him. Mm. So he's just like, I'll just stand in a relaxed way, just like, meh, don't really give a shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. He's not like standing up straight like Fidus, trying mm. to be presentable or anything because mm. he doesn't really care about being presentable. He mm. doesn't. The thought of fitting in with a village hasn't even crossed his mind. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike Fidus. So yeah, he's just like kind of slumped a little bit. This is just like an action pose in terms of just like flares, mm -hmm. fighting. So. Yeah. More functional. I feel like it's kind of a Remy pose in the sense that it's quite large, like shoulders apart, kind of arms out, mm -hmm. legs apart, kind of a power pose for her. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, this would probably be a Remy pose for yeah. like the salute or greeting, yeah. where she has like a that a little bit of sass to yeah. her with the arm yep, on the, her hip. The confidence, like you know, she's like pushing her torso out. Yeah, leaning backwards, kind of head looking upwards, just yeah. like ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very Remy. So. Mm -hmm. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah, this oh, that was the thought. original idea for yeah, Remy. It just looks a it's bit a... weird if she doesn't have her arm on her hip. Yeah. I don't know. She's just, yeah, it feels a little too, yeah, a little too cash, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, this was that another idea, a like too... a chair. It's a bit it's too a bit... out there, I feel like. Yeah, I guess, it's a little... but, I guess, but I guess it works as a chair, not as a greeting. Yeah. As a greeting, a chair. that's just... <laughs> no, of course. No, it's definitely a chair, I feel. Yeah. 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 I Could, feel like Remy would do that. Yeah. And that's just like a from below frame um, camera shot. Yeah. And that is and it. And that's it for uh, poses for now. Poses that we're thinking of. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. Now yeah. that we're done with that bit, we went to watch In This Corner of the World on Friday. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. It was... A very good movie. It was really, really good. It was a very good movie. Uh, I sincerely, 100% was taken in by the characters and the characterization, And I feel like all of the characters came off a thousand percent much, way more genuine and realistic. And just grounded over than say Koino Katachi, which people fucking love. But I'm standing by my opinions on it. Mm -hmm. The characters are so horrible and fake and not believable and melodramatic. But in this, they were presented as real people. As real people. In tough times, they kind of kept their chin up. Mm -hmm. uh, found, found, it's a very human thing to find levity in grief. Mm -hmm. When in moments of like huge distress, people actually tend to like laugh because yeah. it's so stressful, and they had a little bit of that when it's, like stressful times, they mm -hmm. would still find the joy in little things. Yeah. Like the main character is a bit clumsy, so when she's clumsy, they still just like, Haha, that's you know, you're clumsy. Mm -hmm. That's 
the main character is me. <laughs> yeah, she's quite clumsy. Shut up. Um, I saw another character. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Still. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit of background information on the uh, kind of the premise of the movie. Yes. It's uh, set in World War Two. In Japan, near in Hiroshima. Japan, near Hirosh- Hiroshima. Hiroshima. Hirosh- Hiroshima. Hiroshima. So naturally, you go into the movie thinking, "Oh God, it's gonna be like very depressing and, and fucked, fucked up, and you know, oh my God, because you know mm-hmm. the bombs and just, yeah." But it wasn't. It like the movie kept its levity all the way through. And it intended to be, you know... I would say all the way through, but like... But not all the... In general. There there was a certain amount of levity that Mm. the movie maintained. Mm -hmm. And I I think that was the intent. I don't think it intended... Maybe not levity, but like lightness. Levity implies like humour. Okay, fine. It kept a certain lightness to it the entire way through. Mm-hmm. It never, it never drove, drove, like you know, it never really went down into the depths of depression. Yeah. Or anything, and I think it intended to do that. Mm-hmm. I think it wanted to be a story of, you know, that there humans, are str- humans coping. Yeah, it wanted to kind of show that you know there's always hope. Yeah. Regardless of how much despair there is around you. Yeah, that there's always mm-hmm. light, even in the darkest of times when. Yeah people are together they will band together as like a they form a community yeah i think that was the big message but i think one thing that the movie did really well was build its world mm. none of it like sort of you know the whole group think around you know we're we're doing this for the country's good you know we're going to keep fighting down mm. to the last person don't fall for american propaganda yeah and like and it did that really sort of seamlessly it, mm. There was no moment where it felt like... It, it, it never felt were, forced. It yeah. felt like, oh, the character saying this at this current moment. Yeah, I believe that. that yeah. I would probably say something it, the same. It flew, It flowed as a part of conversation. It wasn't like, look, audience, this is information you need to know. Yeah. Very important, must know. It, it didn't feel like that. None of it was like, yeah, like mm-hmm. incredibly just like, it didn't... It didn't treat you like you were a four-year-old. Yes. And I really do enjoy when movies and media do that because no one's a fucking four-year-old watching this. You do, yeah. It's not for kids. Yeah. You can treat us like adults. Um, it was, yeah, it was an exceptional piece of work. I Honestly, I prefer over Ghibli movies because uh, for me, at least, Ghibli movies tend to kind of dive into the abstract and just like kind of leave it up to your interpretation viewers have all these weird weird colors and ooh, atmosphere atmosphere and stuff and i feel like i i respect something which kind of sticks with a real plot and a real kind of this is kind of leading you on to like this is kind of how you should feel during this scene mm-hmm, mm-hmm. has a bit is a bit more structured yeah i felt like this one was extremely good in that sense mm-hmm. i felt like the Characters were extremely realistic. Uh, none of them wore tropes. None of them, none were, them tropes. were tropes, which although, is really the refreshing. The main character was a bit too ditzy. <laughs> she was extremely ditzy, but also not in like a generic anime way of just like walking and then falls flat on her face. No, 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 not like that. But like the whole the, the thing with the but sugar. Like, yeah, but that was like endearing because I was quite far into the movie, so we mm. were like, okay, I can. Okay. So, because she was also with a child. Yeah. And so, it's like, yeah. You, you think to yourself, okay, nobody can be that dumb, but it's far far in enough that you kind of forgive it. So you're like, okay, fine. Yeah, but I feel like it might also be saying how they weren't educated, so they didn't know sugar dissolved in water. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Though she did cook a lot. I feel yeah, like she should have. She, she would have known. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, on touching on the topic of uh, food and sugar, they kind of touched on the topics of like rationing, rationing during the war. Rationing and how they were like reducing the amounts and they had to pay a certain amount to get the rations yeah. as well. Yeah, but it also showed, like, even with such a depressing thing, they also showed how they 
how she would find new recipes or new ways of cooking the food. Yeah, and like all the herbs that she would like go and gather. Yeah, and gather out on like the like roadside mm -hmm. from the pavement, mm -hmm. the cracks in the stone, like the forestry around where where they live. And they never, and she never said. Oh, I'm collecting herbs off the roadside. Isn't this a sad situation? <laughs> no, she was just like, "This is life." Yeah. So she just went around picking it up, and then cooking it, and then cooking yeah. it, and then you were. It yeah. was like a montage scene of her like listing out recipes. Yeah, and hum, it, was, it, it was nice. Yeah, <laughs> it was it, it was really well done in the sense that they just got on with it. Mm -hmm. Like she just got on with. Using a new recipe to try and make the rice look larger, like the portion of rice look larger than it actually was, mm -hmm. and then it came like the reaction of the family when they were having it. It's like, oh my god, this rice is so huge and fluffy. Yeah, and, and then, then the moment of levity where they eat it, and they're just like, mm, <laughs> it didn't. It's quite not work. quite. It's not <laughs> quite right. <laughs> It the movie did relationships really well as well, yeah. It, like the like it, with each person, like main character with each person, and then then all the side characters with each other as well. Mm. I thought was really nicely done. There was no moment where like, you know, my where she's like my sister is my best friend or anything like that. They just showed them, you know, being yeah. really playful and friendly together, and that's all we needed to see. Yeah, I thought yeah. Fur is really, really good. Yep. Um, a few little bits weren't perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there was. This is like for myself. Mm -hmm. Some of the sad scenes, like it made me cry. Like wanted, but like I was like at that sad scene, I was ready to like make me bawl my eyes out. Like I am ready. I want to. I am so invested in this and her emotional kind of trauma in that moment mm -hmm. but then the scene passed so quickly like another character was like kind of digging into the main character mm -hmm. and it was like really sad mm -hmm. because the anger was like really understandably like she would be angry but it's also like lashing out mm -hmm. at her and it was like heart-wrenching it was mm -hmm. sincerely like hor horrible but it passed so quickly like the other character kind of Lashed out at her, called her like, you know, you did these things, mm -hmm. it's your fault. But, and then the scene just ended and just went to a different scene. I was like, you could have, you could have given that an additional like 20 seconds and just, just made the audience and myself just like cry like little babies. <laughs> but it didn't. So I don't know if it was intended, but it came off to me at least as like a missed they opportunity. A missed opportunity slash the overall tone was trying to pull its punches a little bit, mm. trying to keep the tone lighter, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's their choice for making it like that. But for myself, I, I wanted to cry. I, want I wanted them to be, to gut punch me and really dig it in. Because yeah. they, oh yeah, it would have been. <laughs> uh, anime hasn't made me cry in a fucking long time. And... <laughs> This had like the potential to just really hit me in that soft spot. Mm -hmm. That anime just, anime emotionally has just not, not hit me at all for like years. It's been sincerely just like bad writing and bad characters most of the time. For most of the stuff I watched. So yeah. Yep. And it did have some bits that kind of didn't make sense like. A little bit. Like near the end, there was this sudden, sh like sudden different shift, and I thought it was, it was a flash forward into the future with yeah. the main character, but it wasn't. It was just a random scene. Yeah, and it to was give just context like context to something that happens near the end. So I was kind yeah. of just like, okay, that was that felt a little bit tacked on, mm -hmm. but yeah. So there were some bits of it which were like, um, it's like I uh, did it hit perfectly mm -hmm. but as an overall piece of art and storytelling i mm -hmm. thought it was like phenomenal mm -hmm. it was absolutely phenomenal it was yeah 
It's probably the, and oh, oh yeah. another thing, character consistency. Yeah. They were all very consistent characters. Like, of course, they change because of what happens mm. around them, but it it melded well with their personalities, yeah. which they esta- which they took the time to establish. Yeah, and any changes that happened mm-hmm. in terms of personality was like gradual. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like sudden shift. I'm now a totally different person. Yes, p- personality transplants. Yeah. Which happens so fucking much in anime. For fuck's sake. Jesus. <laughs> Calm down. Calm it's like you went through okay. one training montage. It doesn't mean you get to be... A the, badass. The, the, a badass cool guy now. <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I can see the steam coming out of your head. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I, I was... I was very glad that I watched it. And during it, I felt... It, like... It's a great piece of work... And it's something that should be watched, even if you don't specifically love it or like the kind of viewing the part, like the history and the dark, these dark times of humanity. It didn't that really it, focus on the war that much, though. Like the war was, the war was the in world, the background, yeah. In the in the world that they were in, it was that it was their life, hmm. but. The focus was solely on the main character and those around her yeah. and her journey. Yeah. So, if, so even if you're like, oh, I don't really like war stories, it's yeah. not really. Yeah, I feel like it's it's a war story. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's such a, a important piece of art for anime mm-hmm. because it touch it shows that you can kind of we're okay with talking about the world war now, mm-hmm. World War Two from japan mm-hmm. you know we got we were the ones who you know got bombed yeah. but you know we are no longer afraid of going there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we can touch on this topic we can make a movie about it we can do it justice we can make characters feel real you know, and sympathetic real real and sympathetic and it, it really did show just like because we're taught it like at least in the western countries mm-hmm. just like oh germany was evil and everyone who was part of that you know that movement were evil they were all bad people and thank god the allies we even call like the western Mm -hmm. the allies versus the nazis so we always kind of had that tone of they are the enemy they are Mm -hmm. bad people Mm -hmm. but how showing real just like rural villagers Mm -hmm. just being like well shit it's another you know air raid Mm -hmm. so you know all right let's collect our stuff let's you know Bunk, get into the bunker mm-hmm. and stuff like that and that the toll that had on them because it was so free at first it wasn't frequent but then mm-hmm. it became like more more. literally daily mm-hmm. or where they'd have multiple ones daily yeah and oh that oh that scene when i forgot you can't, you can't I, I can't give no spoilers no spoilers no spoilers but when the fire uh, and yeah. the blanket. Yeah, I, yeah, no, no, yeah. don't, don't talk anymore. About I know. It. Don't, stop. I, I was like, <laughs> oh my god, fuck. <laughs> Gee, oh my god, that's oh. Sorry, couldn't have spoiled you. Sorry, couldn't have spoiled you. Sorry, yeah. couldn't have you. <laughs> it was phenomenal. Uh yeah. I, they did. It was the, okay, so good. One thing that you can talk about is the sound effects for the bombings. Hmm. Good I'm, lord. And the gunfire. I'm so happy that one major kind of pleasure I get from kind of cinema is when it, it's it's in vi- like video games. I'm not really about video games. Mm-hmm. In video games and especially in war games where you use guns and when there is artillery and such, they so many games do such a poor job audibly in an audio sense, like they made the guns sound pathetic and you know, the bombs sound look and sound pathetic, just like you throw a grenade, it's just like poof, people are dead there. Mm-hmm. But this movie, I love it when games or like a movie or like movies or media. You said movies like Sorry. three times. <laughs> I burped during the middle of it. <laughs> so, yeah, when movies are like, no, this is what fucking real artillery sounds like, and it's just like it shakes you in your seat, it's so loud, it's just like deafening because that's what it's like and it terrified terrifying like it made me kind of just like shudder in my seat when i went off it was like 
so good that they decide mm-hmm. to go. And you they know. paired it really well with like how the screen kind of blacked out and shook as well. So yeah. it's just like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> it really kind of sold you on that moment. Mm-hmm. I respect that so much. So good. Uh, it's a uh, really good movie. Yeah, absolutely. I and think e- it's the best one I've seen this year so far. I'd say it's probably the best anime movie I've seen in a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like, it is up there for me mm-hmm. in terms of movies with The Girl Who Let Through Time. Mm-hmm. And, and Princess Mononoke and Sword of the Stranger. Sword of the Stranger. I haven't seen Princess Min- Mononoke. Huh? I haven't seen it. I, I will it, watch it. I watched, a, I watched it a long time ago and I kind of forgot what happens. Yeah. It's up there with The Girl Who Let Through Time mm-hmm. and Sword of the Stranger for me. Awesome. Absolutely top, top tier mm-hmm. artistic talent. Fantastic. Yeah. And some scene depictions are really good, like her painting in her head as she was seeing something. Yeah. That amazing. sequence was amazing. Fucking amazing. <laughs> 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 so freaking good. And, you know, I if you're not into, like, war stories or you're not into, like, human dramas, what you have, you, you have to watch it. Mm-hmm. I, like, it's, even if it's something you, you might not enjoy it's something you need to experience and tolerate and Mm -hmm. go through i feel like that is how important this movie is Mm -hmm. that even if you're not you're not enjoying it in the moment it's something you need to sit through and go through i'd say even if it's even even if the premise is is, is not something that you'd enjoy it is sort of an example of writing and characterization that done. needs to be seen and studied yes. and you know so imagine if it's you a are, class and go through it and make notes yeah <laughs> even if yeah even if you don't enjoy it or find the enjoyment in it it is it is such such great cinema and for me to say that about anime it's such great cinema is like that's a big fucking deal not yes. just like, you know, it's a great show, it's a good show. But like, it is a piece of like defining art mm-hmm. in terms of cinematography and cinema. Yeah. So good. So freaking Writing good. Writing as well. Yeah. I mean, the art style was a bit odd at times. The art style was odd, but I felt like it fit with the feeling they were going for. Yeah. Of that kind of lightness. Mm-hmm. Because you look at the characters and it feels like, oh, this is like, you know, it looks like a slice Cutesy. of life. A cutesy slice of life. But yeah. yeah, it was... If, uh, oh, one thing I will say about the art, though, is that even as the main character ages, she always looked like a child. Yeah, a little strange. Like, like she I never... felt like they wanted to keep her, like, air of innocence about her, but maybe went a little far. Um, yeah, because she, like, she hits 18, and then they, you know, go past that as well. So she's, like, in her 20s, but she still looks like she's 12. Yeah. Like, you can make somebody innocent looking, but not make them look like a child. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a minor, it's a minor complaint. Yeah, of mine. it it's, earned it's, so much goodwill good, yeah. that I can't... I don't, I don't think it has flaws that are big enough for it to outweigh everything that is good about Absolutely it. Absolutely not. Absolutely it is, not, no. It's phenomenal. Absolutely. I'm, I will... I will endeavour to purchase the DVD. Comes out. One more, more. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it, that is, I, I, cut... I would be proud mm-hmm. to put that on the bookcase mm-hmm. and for it to it has... talk about it with other people that come around my house in future. It, it has a manga. We should look for the manga. Yes. Definitely. Yes. yes. I respect it far more than Koino Kataji or, you know, your name. I know people loved your name. Your name. I feel it was your name good. was better than Koe no Katachi. It was way better than Koe no Katachi, but I feel it was like, it was okay. It was good. Mm. But this was, this was on a whole new level. This was mm. like stunning. Yeah, I'd very solidly put this at first, then your name, then Koe no Katachi. Yeah. Absolutely f- fantastic piece of work. Piece of art. Great, great stuff. Um... It had quite a few gut punches. It had quite a few, but I wanted to dig it in and make me cry. <laughs> you wanted, you Stick wanted, out, you wanted somebody to stab you and then twist the knife. Yeah, I, oh, <laughs> I was ready. I, I was ready to I go on whatever emotion it wanted me to go on. I genuinely think that a, it it, it never intended 
to like you know stab you and then twist yeah i don't think i don't think that was a part of the intention yeah. at all and b i also think that this is based on a manga and i think they were trying to cram the entire thing into yeah into the movie now i know the movie has a really long run time it's 2 hours it's 2 hours and like 10 minutes yeah. but i think they dedicated more time into establishing the characters which right is really good really which is really good and really i really good. liked it yep and so I think because they had so much material and ground to cover, yeah. I think they couldn't really dedicate the extra time in those gut punch scenes. Mm. But then again, I that I, and it's I think all... it could be that the intention of not doing that came from they mm. were like, you know what, we've got all this material, we want to get the hope and yeah. the the sort of main message across so let's not worry about you know making people cry with these scenes but just make them land as naturally as possible. Yeah. Though we might also just these are all just like speculation on our part. It's totally speculation, so I don't know. Ah, uh, I I want to think that they meant it. Yeah, as... I'm willing to giving it the giving it the benefit of the doubt, really, yeah. because given how well the writing and the characterization is, I feel like they would have been smart enough. Yeah. To actually make those moments land hard if they wanted to. If they to. wanted to. Yeah. It's, it was just, I suppose, my, my personal want. Want to want cry. Want to really <laughs> feel something from anime. I mean, you I, I, I felt it. Yeah, I, I felt it. I felt it, absolutely. You just wanted to cry. I, I just you wanted, wanted like, <laughs> it to take me all the way. You wanted you know, a physical manifestation not, of your emotions. <laughs> yeah, not just like... Like, yeah, I wanted it to go like the full nine yards mm. and just like really go for it. Really but no, cry. it was to Regardless, fantastic. Fantastic, yep. I agreed. I know not numeric ratings don't fucking matter, but like mm. personally for me, that was like a solid eight point five to nine out of ten. Absolutely, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Yeah, I don't know. In my head, eight point five feels a bit low, but the nine feels a bit high. So I'm like, Cause eight point like, seven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely eight point five to nine range. Mm. Yeah, it it's not perfect. Not mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. But it's it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's freaking amazing. So go to the theatres and watch it. Give give this movie your money. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Yes. Miss just miss the next Marvel movie. It's just the fucking same. <laughs> just watch this instead. Seriously. <laughs> it's so much more important than Marvel like another superhero movie. Really. Yes. Skip I don't know, the Justice League movie. Mm, I feel like people like Justice League too much. Skip Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and watch this so good uh, anyway I think we kind of rambled about that rambled about it a lot, a lot. Uh, but yeah. it was a really it good was movie really good. and yeah. I, I think we didn't really spoil much we didn't spoil anything I think yeah yeah, yeah. it's really good uh, anyway um, what else do we have to cover I suppose news but there's really not that much interesting yeah, I mean, stuff. Yeah, new anime on. season is starting. People are freaking out about Amazon Strike. And to be honest, with good reason. Mm. Amazon Strike is, like, really expensive. Is it? Yeah, like Crunchyroll and, like, Funimation, they're, like, under $10 or something mm. a month. But then Amazon Strike is, like, you need to have Amazon Prime and you need to have something else. And then you pay the Amazon Strike stuff on top. Oh, God. So it's I a bit... I already don't have Amazon Prime at all, so... <laughs> yeah, so there's that. And the thing is, is that Amazon Prime... Uh, not Prime, sorry, Amazon Strike. They're getting, like... They're being really selective about what anime they bring on. Mm. And, in the, and everything is an exclusive. They're like, this one, and Amazon Strike is exclusive. This one, also Amazon Strike is exclusive. But mm. then they're not bringing on some other shows, which Crunchyroll would have. So people... Of course, they don't want to have multiple subscriptions so that yeah. they're able to watch everything that comes in a season. Yeah. And Amazon Strike's, like, super expensive. And th there's also the thing that, you know, Crunchyroll, Funimation, and they, their entire business model is just for anime. Mm. So they rely entirely on that. But Amazon is, you know, Amazon. Amazon. So yeah. if they lose Strike, it's just like a drop. Yeah. In, like, their massive... Pool of pool money. of money. Yeah. So that's why people are not really happy with them. Either. Yeah, they haven't really earned the goodwill from the anime community at all. So, 
Yeah. Yeah, they just kind of came in, and it feels more like a business decision rather than uh, we're doing this for as a service for, for our community. For our, yeah, for and the I don't community. think they're doing simulcasts. What? Not simulcasts, sorry, simul dubs. So basically, um, an episode gets dubbed as soon as it comes out, and then gets released as a dub. Okay. So they're called simul dubs. Right. So I don't think Amazon Strike does that, where they release the dubs. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. There, yeah. yeah, not too much interesting news. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, shit, should have made this announcement way earlier. What? By the time you hear this podcast, the website should be up. <gasps> I'm gonna say it. It should be up. Yeah. It's ready. It. I. I've worked on it, and it is. It is pretty much ready to go. We just are going to do a soft launch before you hear this podcast mm -hmm. during this day just to see if the parts kind of work properly i've tested it quite a lot but it should be good for you guys to check it out yeah when you hear this Pat -pat -pat yes uh obviously we're going to be making multiple announcements so if you haven't like made it this far into the podcast or you missed this bit or you know you took your headphones out and just missed it mm. we we're gonna put it everywhere website 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 website, website. <laughs> and, yeah. and we'll also send out like weekly reminders that it exists so, yes you know. go to our website for everything yeah so basically the website is a hub for kind of all our activity pretty much mm. so there is a twitter feed <clears throat> There's a Facebook feed. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also connected to the YouTube channel. So you'll be able to see the latest podcasts and latest videos we do mm -hmm. on the website. So, you know, you don't need to, you don't have to you know, keep a tab up for Twitter if you only follow us or whatever. And one for Facebook and one for YouTube. You can get all of uh, the stuff we send out. On the website. On the website, including blogs, of course. Yep. Blogs are going to be up there. Uh, you can also contact us really easily through it. You can there's an email option. There is also a just contact us form on the website. Uh, and there is a concept art section which will be populated soon enough when we get an artist, which we are going to be looking into starting today as well. So things are happening. Exciting things are happening. Exciting things are happening. We're going to start looking looking for an artist to work with i mean even, at, at least just for some concept art if not for the whole thing but exactly yes we need to get that going yeah super exciting times ahead super exciting it's also a bit scary yeah, very scary <laughs> uh have on on that note of um the website and stuff um there's a poll on the website and it's just kind of figure out you don't have to take it as optional, obviously, but it helps us if you do. Like, if you do want to support us later on when we do actually do the Kickstarter, you can kind of choose from a number of, like, ranges of how much money you'd be, like, happy to give. We're not, obviously not going to, like, force you guys to give a lot of money or whatever. Everyone has their own financial situations, right? So, yeah. uh, even if you can't or, you know, don't want to give any money, there are ways you can help the cause, which will be pretty sweet. Just by spreading the news at that time. More details about that, but if you... That's a bit down the line, though, so... But if you've already set aside, like, yeah, I want to give these guys, like, five bucks, then, you know, just on the poll, you can just click the, like, five dollar option and just be like, so we know. So we know. So we know when to sort of actually officially start launching. Not launching, like, you know... Do working, thing. yeah, working and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, cause, and we and we we ask this because, the one key piece of advice ev everybody who's done a Kickstarter gives is, you need to make sure you have, people who are willing to help you, mm -hmm. when you start the Kickstarter. Yeah. The largest influx of for your Kickstarter is like the beginning. And then it will peter out during the middle. And then hopefully it'll pick up at the end and help you hit your goal. But yeah. So we really want to do our work justice and 
Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Allergies? I don't know. Did you not have your tablet? I didn't. I will do. <laughs> I will do. Okay, fine. I will do. Stop glaring at me. <laughs> it hurts. So, yeah. Um, we need I to bring... stopped glaring at yeah, him. We need to bring the party with us to the Kickstarter. So, yeah, we just want to know. Anyway, that's the big announcement. Mm. Do we have any other stuff to go through? I feel like we are good. We're good for today, I think. Yeah. And we rambled quite a bit about... Oh, go read my blog and then go watch Skiga Kide. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 it's a really... Okay, it's a... It's a romance anime done right, in my opinion. So if you don't like romance, then fine. That's absolutely fine. You don't need to watch it. If you don't like slow, um, slow-paced shows, that's absolutely fine. But if you appreciate good writing with, you know, with natural characters and natural delivery of, of you know, dialogue and story progression, go watch Tsukiga Kide because... It's yes, it's a teen romance, but it's done very well. And yes, read my post and then go watch it. Do it. <laughs> if you like romance and if you're okay with slow pace shows, do it. Okay. Well, it's not loading for me right now, but it's not. that's because my laptop's garbage and I need to replace it. Yes. And you still haven't looked at any new ones. I haven't. It's just, yeah, been busy. And financial situations. Yes. So yeah. Sigh. Don't worry, the site's not broken. My laptop's just garbage. Anyway, I think we should probably call it for now. Also, we obviously use OBS, so you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like we have covered all we need to. Yes. So we can sign off now. Thank you for joining us yeah. again. And if and thank you if you have been listening for this entire thing yeah absolutely <laughs> uh we noticed that we, there's like good 10 people or so who always watch yes about 10 like always and we're really happy about that yeah, so, yeah. it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy inside yeah. it's like oh thank you so yeah really thank you for the support and thank you for the continued support thank you in advance yes um we are gonna be plenty stuff is gonna be moving yes. from now so definitely keep up with us. Uh, we're going to have a lot more interesting news and hopefully concept arts soon enough. Con but we say soon, but we're looking at a timeline of like, what, two couple of months? weeks, couple of weeks mm -hmm. to like a month, two months. Yeah. yeah. To, to like, we well, really don't want to rush it. We yeah. really want to find someone who works well with us. Mm. That's really important for us. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. That's it for today. And sorry, I couldn't start it, so I will finish. Sure. Uh, thank you for joining us. And that is it for today. See you next week. Sorry, Chan out. Oh, also, for, um, subscribe, yeah. like. Oh, yes. Forget, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Go check out our blog. Go check out Twitter, our Facebook face and Twitter. Twitter, Facebook. Check out our blogs. Yes. Check out kind of the old videos. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And check out the website. Go to the website. S it's spelled <laughs> swarumanga.com. <laughs> That's it. Easy. Do it. It's amazing. <laughs> and give us feedback. We're yes. really open to feedback on it. Yes. Yeah. We, we need feedback. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Swarumanga signing off. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Wait. Dot com.